And in, the ter in terms of the individual, Musavi, he was for a very long time trying to conciliate the reformist faction and the conservative. One of his main comments during the more less, less um, noisy, more quiet times of the election period was that he is uh, a bit like, his campaign team were saying he's a bit like Obama. He wants to unite everyone together. Um, and of course, he also had this change slogan and so on. I think what has happened since last Saturday is obvious. People are furious, not just with this, the fact that the election was rigged, but A, with the scale by which, by which it was rigged. I think I, many Iranians would have accepted it even if the regime had announced a narrow 50% win in the first round for Ahmadinejad. I think most people would have said, well, we don't know the countryside, we don't know what people in rural areas might have voted, although the percent of the population is 30-70, so 70% 70 of the population are urbanized. Some people might say, okay, he has a backing. There is a Basij, families of Basij. There is the families of those who have directly benefited from his um, presidency. He might get, you know, I, I, uh, up to 40, 50%. It was at the scale of this, but also the fact that the, the period immediately prior to that had broken all the barriers. People had gone into the streets, had shouted slogans they'd never shouted before. Women went to election meetings, not just for Musabi, but also for Tarubi, also for meetings that included people like uh, um, Khatami and um, Rezai, who's not a, uh, who's quite a conservative guy, but you saw women almost uncovered in some of these election meetings, almost uncovered. So the, the tolerance of the past stars went to the limit in, that, in those two weeks. And yet, when it came to um, the election results, everybody was supposed to go back to their houses, irrespective of who won. I mean, I think we could have had protests even if the regime had announced Musavi had won. But a bit later, not immediately, once he came to power and once things kind of settled down. The scale of the, um, I think the scale of the vote was a joke. The way it was presented was amateurish. I'm now, I mean, there are now all sorts of stories going on about how they did this, why they did it, and so on. And I won't bore you with them, because obviously we don't know and no one knows. But the way it was presented was if people like me who were trying to follow the data on the internet from the morning, from the evening at, say, 10, 30, 11, but kept seeing the same percentage. This percentage almost stayed steady, which is an impossible situation in any election. There were a lot of debates that say the rural areas might vote Ahmadinejad, the towns might vote Musabi and so on. You would see dips and uh, you would see changes in that. And um, I think it wasn't, you didn't need to be a mathematician, you didn't need to be an expert in statistics. People I speak to in Iran say, well, I went to such and such a voting place, everybody in the queue was saying they were voting Musabi. I mean, people were quite adamant they were voting Musabi. <laughs> and then suddenly, the vote came the other way. And this is, by the way, not just North Tehran. I mean, the, the working class districts in Tehran, people stood and voted, um, and many of them, uh, claimed that the people who were voting with them were, vote, were voting um, Musavi, Karubi, Rezai, but not necessarily Ahmadinejad. I think the other issue that angered people was that the regime went overboard with this participation in election. The radio, more than saying who had won, kept saying how great it was that so many people participated. It proved Iran was a democracy. They translated all these articles in the foreign press that had said, you know, uh, because a lot of foreign reporters were in Iran, saying the week before the election, how everything was free, people were debating, how there was a festival atmosphere in Tehran and so on. So there was this, um, if you like, euphoria by the regime, accompanied by a total um, disaster in terms of ordinary people. And the demonstrations were inevitable. I think what has happened 
from Saturday onwards is that at every step, the people have been ahead of um, Musabi, Karubi, everybody else. And interestingly enough, these people have been forced to make statements to match the mood of the crowd. Saturday, we heard Musabi trying to get an appointment to meet Khamenei, which he eventually did get on Sunday. Uh, then, he, then his website was saying um, uh, he's called on the Islamic uh, Shia uh, hierarchy to annul the vote. I mean, this is, you know, it's a bit of an um, anomaly. The supreme leader has uh, ripped the vote. You go and call on people to change the vote who are similar Islamic um, authorities. He was not addressing the population. People around him told him, look, either you're going to disappear off the political scene or you match what's going on. And I think that is what he has done. He has at every step uh, followed or, t or really tamed the masses, but he has done it so far. The reason are many. The reasons are many for this. One of them is that these people are all the generation of the February 79 revolution. In February 79, those who compromised less gained most. There was no doubt. I mean, if you look at Khomeini, one of the things that separated him from other, cler other clerical leaders, other secular leaders, and so on, with the exception of the left, if you take the bourgeois politics in general, what distinguished Khomeini from the rest was that he did not compromise. He kept. Um, he kept the momentum going, and at all times, uh, he knew that if he backed down, he would lose the crowd. The crowd dictates a, a, a status, a political stance, and I think these people are aware that they will lose the crowd. So I think that throughout the last week, we have seen Musavi being very careful on that. Today is very different. Today is very different because after all the protests of last week, the, the mass ones you have seen on television, I won't go about uh, too much about them. I think the slogans show confusion, but at the same time, the slogans also show that at times when people have tried to make the slogans even more radical, they've succeeded. 